and this is The End Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. Good to be back with you today. We got another great show. We have a great in-studio guest, Mr. Peter Dobson. Thank you. He has Gus. entered the building. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. I mean, we were just saying before the show started, that's from uh, Change of Habit. That's right. <laughs> that's part of the film. After you go through that long montage of Barry Teller Moore being a nun, yes. we finally get to him in, a, in the apartment. <laughs> that's right, playing <laughs> that guitar the, with everybody. Play the acoustic. And, of course, you would know very well many of those <laughs> scenes and songs. Of course, there was a whole symphony that wasn't in, the, in that shot. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar made all that noise. Yeah, exactly. Right. An acoustic guitar, that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, you, you've had a, or you have an, a, a long, illustrious career. And you've, and we we talk about you, you uh, portraying Elvis. You did in uh, a couple different films. Right. Uh, one was uh, Protecting the King. Right, Protecting the King, which uh, which uh, is how we met the other day when you brought that up to me. Yes. But uh, uh, it's not that I'm a a, a, a touring impersonator. <laughs> That's right. Uh, years ago. We, uh, uh, I appeared in the film Forrest Gump. Yes, from uh, 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 director Robert Zemeckis, and uh, we did a very short-lived sh uh, show called Johnny Bago. And uh, also, as I mentioned before, one of the it was a one-hour comedy about this guy traveling around in a Winnebago, going from state to state. And he was in uh, North Dakota, and uh, he's out there taking pictures. And there's that very famous footage of Bigfoot that we all see from 1967. And he blows it up, and of course, Bigfoot's wearing glasses. It turns out it's Elvis <laughs> hiding out in a, in a trailer park up in North Dakota. Uh, needless to say, the show, um, uh, uh, it didn't last long uh, due, due to uh, financial things with CBS and everything. And uh, But Zemeckis approached me uh, after the show um, was canceled and said, look, I'm doing this film called, called Forrest Gump. Uh, there's a part in there for, for uh, Gotta Play the King. Would, would you like to do it? And uh, you know, who, who was I to say? I was unemployed at that point. <laughs> so I said, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, we, you know, the, you know, I don't think anyone knew the, the enormity of that film. Of course, right. working with Zemeckis, you know, it was going to be something special. Sure. Tom Hanks and all that. Yeah, you bet. Uh, that terrific cast and everything. But uh, no one anticipated what that movie now became. You right. Know, what it became or what it is now. Yes. You know? It's funny because I'll, I'll sit here with uh, many guests and they'll... <laughs> And they'll say, you know, I was on this TV show, and I did this, and I did that, and right. I tell them, uh, uh, "Don't let the gray hair fool you." I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I did see Forrest Gump in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but that happens to be every other day in this town. You know, <laughs> exactly. I, I I just got one of these Galaxy iPhones, and I'm I'm, which is like you know something from Star Trek, right? As far as I'm concerned, but um, it's trial by error how I'm learning to use this thing. Sure. Calling you this morning was an effort. <laughs> <laughs> You know, of course, of course, you know, if you have fingers like mine, you know, and hit the iPhone, it's like I hit someone else's number or three numbers at the same <laughs> exactly. time. <laughs> or God forbid you sent someone the wrong text like I did the other day. That's that, no kidding. I sent someone the wrong text the other day. And thank God it wasn't, a, 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 you know, something off uh, off kilter. About. But I realized I sent it to the wrong person. I, and now they have a feature where you can talk into it and it just kind of dictates your yes, words. Yes. So that's a big safety net for me. That's great. That's why I kept the phone. Uh, you know. Very nice. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you know what? You know, um, over the weekend we were at the. Uh the emerging uh, cinema, uh, cinematographers yeah, uh, right. awards. Uh, that's where, yeah, that's where that's where we basically we met. We're on the red carpet. Got some mm -hmm. pictures of you walking in. That, yeah. that was great. I appreciated that, by the way. Oh no uh, problem. Yeah. Well, I, w I was there with the uh, 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 a great cinematographer uh, named named Ron Vidor, uh, who comes from the uh, great lineage. His uh, <coughs> pardon me. His his. Um, Great grandfather was uh, King Vidor, who made Duel in the Sun, and you know, right, back okay. in the uh, golden age of Hollywood. Yes, uh, and uh, I, I uh, got him. I was fortunate to get him about a year ago, and we we just shot a a very epic little short film called White Mule, uh, which is very very much speaking of old school, uh, very much in the spirit of a uh, Smokey and the Bandit um, uh, type of film, and we 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 we, we got a um, an actor uh i didn't do much casting because i needed a 1000 horsepower car and the, the guy that we we hired just happened to have one and uh had the looks of james dean and, and i and uh, perfect casting yeah, perfect casting car and, and, uh, car and everything we used uh, uh, Amber Smith uh, as as the the role of Ruby, who who um, you may may know her from Sports Illustrated. Yes. More, more recently, she was on Celebrity Rehab and all that stuff. 
Um, and they just did a bang-up job on, on this thing. And uh, now we're, 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 it's uh, being submitted into a lot of film uh, festivals across the country and getting in quite a few. Yeah, that's so we're real excited about that. Yeah, because that, that's what the Cinematographer uh, uh, Awards was, was, all these short films. And Absolutely. What did you think about some of those? Did you uh, I thought some of the, some of the, the short films were, were genius. And, you know, we all know that, you know, making a short film, especially when you get an investor, I, I notice I'm going, boy, that short film was only, you know, 10 minutes long. Right. Why are there, you know, 50,000 credits at the end of the film? <laughs> yes. And uh, someone told me that those were each, each investors. Right. Each one of those guys was investors. No, I used one woman. Right, uh, one I, investor. I, I used, I, we had the shortest, you know, <laughs> credits uh, out of uh, out of them all. Um, but uh, there's not much money, obviously, to be made in short films. Right, and they're they're kind of, in my case, being used as a um, uh, a business card, if right. if you will, uh, uh, to um, get something on a much bigger scale made, which is uh, the project I'm really here to to plug. Yes, uh, and and. Um, you know, having this, this this team of wonderful filmmakers, Ron Vidor, who was a Steadicam operator, you know, ranging, you know, started with Jaws, Stand By Me, uh, all his shots in Boogie Nights, all the Steadicam stuff going to the pool, outside of the pool. Uh, he shot a lot of films that, that really, uh, uh, particularly Stand By Me as well, uh, struck a chord with me um, for the very vibe that we're going after, this full-length feature that we uh, just developed called Exit 102 Asbury Park. Um, about the summer of 74 in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and, and, and it's very much in the spirit of an American graffiti and West Side Story. Yes. Uh, we were just fortunate to get uh, Haskell Wexler, who's about 98 years old now, <laughs> <laughs> but he's sharp as yeah, a tack, and, and Haskell <laughs> actually was the, uh, and it, it, he was the visual consultant of American graffiti. He yes. didn't get the DP credit, there were right. some union issues, but he, he in fact was the DP of of, 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 of uh, American Graffiti. That's beautiful. And uh, we just got him aboard very recently to uh, really achieve this look. Yes. Um, we've been inundated, uh, unfortunately, when I started this project back in 2008. Shows like the Jersey Shore and Jersey Licious. Now I just saw a signboard, uh, signboard on the way here called Made in Jersey. And yes. I think people are really getting sick of uh, New Jersey, um, but... <laughs> That's not the Jersey. None of that stuff is the Jersey that I grew up in. Right. Uh, Asbury Park was a very musical town. Yes. It's got a long history of rock and roll, jazz. Uh, yes, there was a guy named Bruce Springsteen yeah, from Freehold who, who 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 would play there during the weekends, and and he was an up and comer, which is very much this the story that we developed. It's not about Bruce Springsteen. Right. Um, this is this is about the summer of 74. This is the year before he made I gotcha. uh, Born to Run. He was still recording the album. Right. Um, but it's more about the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the cruising scene, the, the circuit they had on Ocean Avenue, um, <clears throat> and the working class kids who were all these, these guys who loved their hot rods, their, their, their barracudas, their mustangs. Yes. Uh, and another group of kids uh, that were struggling musicians uh, and Bruce Springsteen was one of them uh, and there was a new club that was put up in those days it was called that's now a legendary club called the Stone Pony yes <laughs> uh, which is a central point uh, in, in in the film right and uh, we added it's it's very rock and roll driven uh, and uh, we're, we're 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 really close uh, on getting the financing I getting the 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 financing for this film has been it should be a movie in itself yes I've met every character in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, right. But getting behind the camera, you've got to start from scratch again. Yes. And, you know, not just to be another director turn actor. Right. And there's quite a, a lot of good examples um, uh, who, have d who have achieved that. Uh, but I, I, I've really been influenced by the likes of Howard Hawks and, and uh, 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 particularly uh, Sam Peckinpah, who's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Back in power. Well, we we know some of his. I think he's made some small movies. So, well, some with small Wild Bunch, but yeah. Wild Bunch, my favorite movie yeah, of all time. Of, uh, what was it? I think Steve McQueen was it. Uh, Get away! You got, <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. That's and, uh, and of course, George Lucas b before the Star Star Wars <laughs> stuff. Um, right. And, and uh, that movie left such a profound effect on me as a, as a kid. Yes. So that yes. gives you an idea of how old I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, I'm, I'm uh, with you. I remember all those. So yeah. No strangers. Well, as I just mentioned, you remind me of Dennis Weaver. 
<laughs> you, you got that voice, man. And and uh, again, I watch that show. So. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know half your listeners know who Dennis Weaver is. Well, they might because he did. A, he played. Um, he played an admiral in the '80s. Remember, he came back in the early what you, '80s. In uh, the it was a, another TV show. He played an admiral. I'm trying to remember the name. It was the same time when uh, it was uh, CBS. It was. Um, Scarecrow, and Mrs. King. Uh, that I remember. And, yeah, and right. uh, it's the same time frame. Okay. He came back and he was uh, like an admiral in uh, I, a Navy that ship. One, that one got by me. Of course, we know him in uh, McLeod. Oh, of course. The 70s, <laughs> but I did, yeah, the one in the eighties. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you brought that. You know, you brought up Scarecrow, and Mrs. King. I just yeah. thought of the actor Perry King. I just watched a film the other night called The Lords of Flatbush. Beautiful, oh, which I is love a mini masterpiece. Stallone, Henry, Henry Winkler, Henry uh, Winkler, Perry, Perry King, King, and I always forget the other guy's name. Forgive me if, he, uh, if he's out there listening. I, um, <laughs> But the movie really is a little mini masterpiece. It is. It uh, is. Uh, Great. And, and all this raw talent. Um, pre you know, pre Fonzie. These, you know, pre, this is Henry Winkler, who, by the way, who's, who's the least cool yeah. one of the bunch. You're right. He's exactly. kind of the nerdy one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, in Lords of Flatbush. Great but, movie. But, uh, you know, uh, for me, it was Perry King that yeah. I loved. Oh, man. Film. I got a story about Perry King, but I'll, I'll get you on our next segment. Okay. <laughs> hey, Peter, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Having a great time. My, my pleasure, man. Yeah. All right. Great to be here. Hey, thanks. All right, well, this is Gus Summers, and you're listening to The In Show, and we have in-studio guest Mr. Peter Dobson, and we're going to have more of his story in just a little bit, so you hang in there. We'll be right back. <laughs> and this is The In Show, and I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. we got another great show. That's right. We have Mr. Peter Dobson in studio. Peter, thank you for being with us again. <laughs> That's good to be here. You bet. You know, we were talking about Lords of Flatbush. I, I cover the LA Auto Show mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And I was walking from uh, hall, the South Hall to the West Hall. And I'm just walking along, and I hear this voice. And I just stop. And I said, I turned around, and I said, Perry King. And he turned around. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me. I recognized his voice as I was walking. Right, right. <laughs> he has that distinctive voice. And, you know, nice. Was this nice. recently? Was this? Uh, this was not this Ali Auto, but the previous one. Okay. So, so 2010. Yeah, so right, just still, recently. But that's a, yeah, and uh, all that time. And I said, you know, I remember watching you on Riptide. You Riptide, and Joe you Penny. You and Joe Penny. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and, uh,. So, so we chatted up a bit. You know, he's he was in, he's into cars. So, uh, and, is he uh, still acting at all? Is he still uh, doing that? Tidbits. Uh, what what he uh, he's really uh, went back to raise his family, but uh, uh -huh. his kids are grown now. They're in college, right, so he right. feels like he can you know get back into it. And I've seen him on uh, quite a few things. Uh, uh, SCI. Uh, yeah. Well, the CSI, CSI Miami, Miami. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. So I'm in that, and uh, there's a couple other. Yeah, all the CSI shows seem to dig, you know, get dig, dig people out of retirement and whatnot. <laughs> you know, and, and guys like um, uh, Perry King, who I who I, I really loved, and then another guy I kind of put in that category is Ken Wall. Talk about another movie. Kind of, remember the Wanderers? I love know, the and, Wanderers. And, 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 that was and, a great, fantastic. Remember Wise Guy? Uh, of course, uh. Joan, Joan Severance. I used to date her a long time ago. Really? In fact, I, I dated her while she was doing that show. That was funny. Joe, uh, what's his name? Spacey. Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey played uh, her brother. Yeah, that's right. And yet they were kind of having in this kind of, kind of weird. incestuous, <laughs> weird affair. So, so you were dating her at the time? Uh, I was. That's when I met her and started dating her at that time. And and I was. I I did my very first film back in. Good Lord, 1989, kind of the last of the um, the music. It was actually the original Glee. It was a film called Sing. I remember Sing. <laughs> and it was by done uh, by Craig Zayden and Neil Marin, yes. the guys who did Footloose and Fame. Yes. More recently, they just did, they they did Chicago. Right. And um, this was Glee. I mean, this was this was uh, Brooklyn high schools during their you know their yearly show called Sing. And you bet. Uh, it, it, you know, had all wait, Patty Labelle and and I, a very. Uh, this was a pre Goodfellas, Lorraine Bracco, who, Lorraine who I Bracco. co starred in the film with. <laughs> um, so I'm really, I'm really dating myself. <laughs> but like I said, man, I, like you, man, we, we, we we're, we're taking this ride here yeah. in, in Hollywood, and it, it amazes me that I'm, I'm, I'm even still here. Yeah, um, you bet. And and trying to make the jump into producing and directing, yeah. That, yeah. and that's a big deal. Right. I mean, I mean, hearing you talk, we're talking off air. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, and I got to mention, mm. and they they like the craft, they like what they do, but they would rather talk about something else, mm -hmm. sports, cars, whatever right, it is. And right. I'm like, do you want to talk about movies? Don't you? Right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I could I can openly say this. You know, there's a there's a lot of um, uh, you know, there's a whole new generation of of, of casting directors out there, producers, etc. And <clears throat> I've had experiences where I 
where I would uh, bring up something, I go, you know, that kind of, during an audition or something, and I would just openly say, you know, that kind of reminds me a little bit of Dog Day Afternoon. Or, yes. And they're like, what, is that a dog pound? Is that? Yes. They, they didn't get the reference dog. To, right. I said, no, that's a movie with Al Pacino. And Pacino, they, yeah, right. You know, and, all, and, and <laughs> so, you know, this, and I figured this is the generation I'm dealing with now. Right. You know, an old movie today for today's generation, their classic is a film like Ghost. Yeah, right. Our dirty anything with Patrick Swayze, you know, he's like the Gene Kelly of <laughs> of, of of this generation, you know. Nice. And anything prior to that, it's you know. Someone asked me. He goes, a, a celebrity crush. Yeah. A celebrity crush. Oh, easy for me, Linda yeah. Carter. And they go, who? Uh, I'm a Wonder Woman. Uh, Linda Carter. And they're like, uh, it was. <laughs> Your I, eyes I, lit I, up. No, right no, away. I, uh, my 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 my, uh, my my good friend of mine uh, uh, named Melissa Prophet used to represent uh, uh, really? Linda Carter back yeah. in the day. Yeah, okay, and isn't that uh, <laughs> so? So yeah. since since we have Celebrity Crush, go ahead. Ah, uh, <laughs> boy, if I had to pick one, yeah, if I had to pick, like, so, well, by the way, still, I would, I would, I would jump in now. Yes, I'd have to say Raquel Welsh, man. Oh yeah, you bet. Raquel Welsh again. See you, Simon. You bet. Raquel Welsh, and yes, we we got the uh, you know the, the the famous one one million BC, but right. Mother Jugs and Speed. <laughs> Raquel Welsh. There. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Or the or, or, uh, the burning of Annie Holder. Or Annie um, Holder when she played the female. Yes. Uh, kind of Clint Eastwood. And there's that great poster where she's wearing the poncho. Yes. Nothing underneath that. and a gun belt and a yes. little uh, sombrero. <laughs> Yeah, Raquel Welsh for me, and and you know she, you know you see her. Um, I I've met her years ago. Ironically, a, a buddy of mine dated uh, her her daughter back in the day, who was uh, Tawny Welsh, who yes. was uh, in that film Cocoon. Yes, uh, and I met uh, Raquel, who was a very surreal experience as she was uh, uh, asking me if she could uh, uh, have a marble cigarette. <laughs> And I, uh, that was my, my kind of my, my, surreal my communication, moment. surreal moment, yeah, Sm smoking, sure. s smoking cigarettes on the side of her pool house because she didn't want to be seen yes. from her guest. So I was like the, del the, the, you know, the derelict guy supplying her cigarettes. <laughs> um, but she was out, and this was probably about 13, 14 years ago, and she was stunning then. Yes. And, you know, she sells those wigs now and everything, but yes. she's got to be 70 Yeah, she something. is 70, yeah. She's like 71, 72. And buddy, she looks she absolutely does. Amazing. <laughs> uh, I mean, she's dropped dead. So, wow, um, yeah, that's your question, Raquel. Uh, Welch. Raquel, watch. Wow, yeah. all right. It seems like we have the same uh, <laughs> <laughs> prolific. Yes, we have the. <laughs> yes, and we go forward. <laughs> uh, yes, right, 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 right. Fantastic. We definitely but have similar tastes, pal. We're, yes. <laughs> we're, we're cut from the same uh, cloth, you might say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, right now when you're when you're talking about the Lords of Flatbush. Right. I just was talking to somebody, and again, they went blank. Michael Beck. I was talking about uh, Michael Beck and uh, James Remar, but mm -hmm. the Warriors. The, of course, of course. Come on, they went blank on me. That was, uh, and and of course, the great Walter Hill. Yes. Who uh, who directed that? You're right. You know, and Walter Hill's still pumping around now. But you know, I mean, again, you know, the, and these are films like the Warriors. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just uh, did a film recently, and the only reason I did it because uh, I wanted to meet Michael Pere. Eddie and the Cruisers. <laughs> Come on, Eddie uh, and the Cruisers. I'm not remember sure about the, the film this was, but remember I remember uh, a Greatest American Hero. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Add Streets of Fire with Michael Pere. Yes. Uh, Played Cody. Other, yes, Cody. Moon Forty Four. Moon Forty Four. Oh, you got me on that one, pal. Heard of it, but never seen it. Oh, you got to see it. It's never it. seen that one. You got to see that one. You'll like it. But you know, Michael Pere is another one, and um, you know. Uh, who, who, by the way, he is still active. Yes, know, and, and he's quite uh, just a. Uh, just, it was just a treat to, 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 to uh, you know, to look at you know one right. of your idols as a, yeah, as you a bet. teenager, because I loved Eddie and the Cruisers and all those films that we're oh, talking about. And every now and then, I'll read in the trades that they're going to remake one of these. How can you remake? The Warriors. Yeah, what impossible. Gonna, what are you going to do with, uh, uh, you know, um, Who? Zach, uh, whatever his name is? Yeah, right, right, right. I, yeah. I mean, you know. Who can replace Michael Who can Brett? replace, <laughs> you know. James Remore, of James all Remore, people. Michael Pere, you know. <laughs> who, I mean, what young actor, you yeah. know, I can't, nothing comes off my mind. Yes, uh, not at all. You Not know, at all. I just wish I, you know, I wish they would just leave those films alone. Right. I remember yeah. uh, a few years ago they wanted to uh, remake uh, Escape from New York. Right. It's like. Who, who How are you, you gonna going get? to replace Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell. Yeah, exactly. How are you going to do it? You know, <laughs> uh, they are remaking the uh, the Mad Max films, and there is a good actor there named who I do like, uh, who may, may may pull that off as an actor named Tom Hardy. Um, okay. 
Is that who they blame? Tom Hardy was the villain in the recent Batman film. Right. And, uh, he's got yes. a wonderful uh, independent film called Bronson. Yes. Um, it, which is amazing. All these guys from Australia, all seeing who, the reason they're taking all these American jobs. Right. Because they're all classically trained. You're right. You, you know what's funny that yeah. you mentioned that? I was <coughs> talking to somebody and we were saying, you know, Australia. Yeah. And, and, and it's in its own era. Mm -hmm. And it's like it, it's <coughs> broaching up. On, on the United States in regards to films where it's like they, they love the classical films so they know all these things Absolutely. so everything that we have saw mm -hmm. back in the 50s and 60s right. all these tough guys it's like it's now for them. Absolutely. So the Wild Bunt, the Magnificent Seven, that's mm -hmm. that's who they seem to you're, enjoy. You're absolutely right about that. They, 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 there is a, 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 an England and in places yes. like Australia, Germany, you know, they have a deep deep respect for American cinema yes uh, and all the young actors uh, 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 from those places are very familiar with all the old classics come on yeah, um, yeah you bet and uh, and that's why I think Tom Hardy might pull this off I know Mel Gibson uh, uh, handpicked him to do this role did he really yeah oh interesting uh, okay um, and uh, you know after seeing some of his work on uh, like I just yeah Batman film, bro, Batman uh, particularly Bronson, Bronson. Yes. see Bronson man True story about this insane criminal yes. that was in jail in, in London back in the day. See his performance in that. And for my money, the best young actor today is uh, Tom Hardy. You know who, I mean, just as you're, as you're talking about that, you know yes. who might have been able to pull it off too? Um, ben, uh, ben Foster. Ben Foster. Ben Foster. Uh, you might remember him from uh, a couple movies. Um, yeah, yeah. Ten, no, ten, ten, I know this name. I'm, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed that this is yeah. not coming. God, I need a visual. Of course, I, I know the name, buddy. Um, 310 to Yuma. He was oh, Russell okay. Crowe's second. Oh, right, right. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's good. Yes. I know exactly who you're talking about. He, he's he's, he's played a lot of weird roles, but he might yes, have that. Yes, that's yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, is he American or is he uh, Ben? No, I, I thought is he ben was. Ben Foster from uh, I, I thought he was Australia. Well? Is yeah, that another uh, import? Yes. Yeah, gr great example, Ben Foster. Uh, yeah. As you were thinking, I thought, who mm -hmm. else might be able to pull up his. Mad Max, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, because we have uh, Mad Max and then we have uh, the Road Warrior. Mm -hmm. Road Warrior. I watched that, I don't know, a thousand times. Right, right. Well, the Road Warrior, uh, they put a little bit more money. You know, it's uh, funny. The Road Warrior, you love that. Uh, obviously, the best of the trilogy. Yeah, you bet. But I started getting a deep appreciation for Mad Max, the first one. Oh, again, you because bet. Of, because of the lack of no money. Yes, and it set but the story, but how beautiful it was. And those car chases, man. You know, the <laughs> speed-up film, it was very organic, very real. Which, of course, with the, when they expanded it in the later ones, yes. but you really see the blueprint right. uh, in, 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 in the original. I, I like this, the scene when he says, you know, you have, you, know, you cut through, uh, those will take you ten, but it'll take you five to cut through your... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> beautiful. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, man. You know your stuff. Yeah, well, you, you know, know. some people said, uh, you know, going uh, out misspent youth, but now it's paying <laughs> off. <laughs> That's all like right here. You know, we're on Sunset Boulevard right now. I mean, right down the street is, is, my, is my church, which is called Amoeba Music. Yes. <clears throat> You go upstairs. I mean, the place is the size of a football field up yes. there, and they if if, uh, if 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 it was shot on film, they got it. They got it. They, the <laughs> most unbelievable collection. There's a much better way to actually instead of going online on Amazon, yes, just to go see it for real, right? Because everything else is closed down. Virgin Records and yes. all the, you know, Blockbuster, which we all saw coming, and everything is Netflix now. But even the stuff they're having online now. Sometimes you can't you, you 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 don't know what to type in. Right. But when you go to a place like Amelia Music, yes, you're going to see titles Boom. you just never even thought of getting before. Like I just got driving uh, classic movies, driving classic movies yes. from the seventies. Oh, that's recently. awesome! You know, it's like being at the bookstore. You never would have picked up that title. Absolutely. That's next to the one Unless that you were you wanting to get. Picked it up and saw it. Yeah, man. exactly, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's we're a like dying breed. Yes, we Remember are. when you used to touch things? <laughs> <laughs> Go places. Yeah, right. That word, computers. <laughs> That's right. Remember using a, a stick as a gun? <laughs> remember, the, remember playing Army? <laughs> yes. And you, you, rem, you remind me of a Woody Allen movie where he cut the, the gun, he carved the gun out of soap uh -huh. and of rain. <laughs> He's <laughs> trying to <laughs> melt it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just saw uh, the original Dillon. Well, not that they were speaking of guns being carved out of soap. I just yes. saw, I watched War Notes and Dillinger from the 1973 version. Best version of the movie. Loved War Notes. He made a great movie with. Um, uh, Dennis uh, Dennis Quaid, uh, tough enough. Tough enough. You remember that movie? I didn't see that. Oh, movie. Sorry. beautiful! Yeah, <laughs> great movie. I, I got I have it recorded on cassette. Okay. So if anyone uh, VHS cassette. <laughs> VHS cassette. <laughs> I, I found it the other day. Hey, maybe, 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 maybe you can burn me a copy yeah. on, your, on your VHS. <laughs> the double, the double VHS. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I'm still carrying my Betamax around. If you could transfer it to a beta, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'll meet you on my horse and buggy outside. Yeah, you gotcha. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Pete, you know, thanks for coming in. Yeah, I appreciate That's fantastic. it. Fantastic. Thank uh, you for having me. You bet. You bet. All right. Well, this is Gus Summers, and you're listening to The In Show. And we have in-studio guest, Mr. Peter Dobson. We're going to have more of him in our next segment. See so you hang in there. We're going to be right back. Hit it, man. <laughs> And this is The End Show. And I'm your host, Scott Summers. Good to be back with you today. we got another great show. We have Peter Dobson in studio. Be again. Play that, you play that song like three times now and it never gets old. <laughs> it's a great thing about Elvis. <laughs> it, it's exactly. There's that, well, there's that one song that never gets old. You know, you, you had asked me, uh, you know, favorite song. Oh, yeah. man. And I got a yeah, top ten. Right. Um Less, but one of my favorites, and mm. it makes me laugh because everyone goes, really, you like that one? I said, I love that one. Mm. Bossa Nova. Bossa Nova. Yeah, huh? Bossa of course. Nova. Uh, fun, would be fun, fun in Acapulco. That's right. Remember he was with the little organ? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I go, I go <laughs> as far as movie soundtracks, I go for the, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to move from, from Love Me Tender. Okay. When he's singing it, now of course he does love me tender later, but yes. in the opening of the film. Oh yeah, you bet. But his soul house <laughs> has no chimney. Yeah, yeah. This, and he's, he he uh, <laughs> goes into that that I love uh, the soundtrack from Love Me Tender because it's it's just like his it's the, it's his sun sessions of movies. Right. His hair still blonde brown. Yes. He hasn't dyed it yet. It's his first time on his set. You know, <laughs> this beautiful young kid. Yeah, you bet. In the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> moving the way he does you know, he's and, and, swag and, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I really started to get into that again all his, all his uh, uh, stuff, stuff from, uh, from yeah. uh, Love Me Tender oh, yeah, yeah all, the, awesome. all the songs from that I, you know I, I, I know I had mentioned that poor, uh, they um, call me poor boy oh that's right <laughs> poor boy <laughs> look at oh, you yeah. <laughs> look at you <laughs> And I, I, I wanted to mention because I had told you that uh, when we uh, we met at uh, this over, uh, the weekend <coughs> I've seen like all, all the Elvis movies, and yeah. of course all the people who portrayed Elvis. Yeah, and y your performance on uh, protecting the king, spot on, spot well, on. I, I I appreciate that. It it it, it um, <coughs> again, we've done a lot of talking off radio. <laughs> yes, <coughs> yeah. excuse me. And um, it, it's a very controversial story. Um, there 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 have been, um, you know really scathing reviews on this film uh, being because it was from the Stanley brothers and you know there's it's looked upon from some uh, uh, hard die hard uh, fans that D Stanley was was in fact the Antichrist <laughs> right <coughs> and maybe in some cases <coughs> excuse me uh, I don't know all the facts but you know the, the fact that Vernon got remarried very very relatively quickly after yes. Gladys died, when Elvis went to Germany, he met this woman named Dee Stanley, and right. she did, in fact, have some sons. Now, their relationship was, you call it what you want. Uh, I know Elvis wasn't, you know, from all the stuff that I've researched and yeah. read, that he wasn't too happy about it. But right. the fact was that she did have these two boys. David Stanley was, in fact, part of this. He was thrown into it. Uh, and by the time he was uh, 17, he was not very good in school. He, Elvis uh, he, uh, influenced him to do karate, and he did, in fact, <coughs> excuse me, become a bodyguard uh, uh, for him. Right. Um, and, and of course, you know, in the film, there's there's things that uh, are questionable. Obviously, they didn't get the rights from the um, Elvis Presley um, Enterprises. Um, of course, I always had a problem with my hair in that film, <laughs> as so many. Review said, but we were on a shoestring budget, yeah. and there was a wig that looked ridiculous. And, and David really, who I thought did a phenomenal job <clears throat> as, in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of being a director, um, he did not want to do the impersonation over the top. Make he made the outfits very simple, and he said, "Look, this is not about the hair." And I said, "Yeah, but if this is about actual facts, buddy." <laughs> Um, but th there was nothing that the, the hair was the, the for those of you who have seen the movie <coughs> who who who've made comments about the hair it's because they didn't have any good hair extensions and the wig was terrible so we just went with what I had yes. added some stuff in the front but aside from that it was um, his point of view right um, you yeah, know which like, is really what the story was which about is, which is exactly what the story is about for, and Elvis did lo like the notion of having a brother. Right, uh, and he did like that, of course, with his you know twin Diane yeah, Stillbirth, Jesse, Jesse Aaron, yeah. and all that. That was obviously uh, uh, Elvis did enjoy having these 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 step brothers, and I, yes. there's no doubt about that. I've, David showed me wonderful pictures of them uh, on the set of um, <coughs> excuse me on his earlier films. 
uh, on set with him. Right. Uh, and uh, on their lap, and Elvis, you yes. know, water, having water pistols with him. Yes. Uh, right up until the uh, the 70s, when, when he really took him in. Yes. Um, as he was, got older. As he got older. Yeah. And there was, you know, no secret that there was a lot of, uh, you know, pills going on, drug use, and the film was not about Elvis's music. It was really what was going on behind closed doors and the effect that it was having on David um, um, uh, and, and a lot of hard times that were really going on, right. uh, particularly when that yeah. the book Elvis, What Happened, came out. Yes. They Which I must have read bit. a dozen times. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that, that did, in fact, crush Elvis uh, right. when, that, when that book yeah. came out, and I've read all all kinds of things on that um but you know that's a movie it's a movie for the viewer to decide that you might yeah. love it you might hate it right but it's uh, the one thing you could definitely say about protecting the king um it's different it's very un- it's a very unique perspective right it's not about the you know the, right and exactly. the three stages of elvis as so many others did yes. but we were talking about great portrayals of elvis yes I've got two favorites. <coughs> Who we just brought up before, Kurt Russell. Oh, oh, come on, Elvis the TV show. Kurt movie? Russell, oh, ironically, was with Elvis, and it happened at the World's <laughs> yeah, Fair. Yes, he was a little kid. And yeah. I thought Michael St. Gerard did a great job. He did the TV do. movie. I do. He, 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 I thought he did a a, a, a really terrific job. I do uh, you know, I know Priscilla Hand picked him. Right. Uh, about uh, ten, maybe eleven years ago, I had gotten another Elvis movie, and th- these things happen by chance. I, I love Elvis like everybody else. Yes. And yes, there was an obsession when I was younger, but I, I <laughs> certainly, um, these things have fell kind, kind of into my lap over the years, and I've always, like everybody, found Elvis exciting. Yes. No one can touch Elvis, and no yes. one ever will. Let's right. be clear about that. Yes. There's all it can be interpretations, and most of them can be really to be desired, as we know. Right. Um, but there are, but there, like we just said, Kurt Russell's portrayal, um, he was very, it was, he did hone him. Oh, yeah, he did. I he, he honed he him. He had him. He really. He's did. one of those guys that you think of. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Speaking of the great actor, Kurt Russell. You're right, right. You know. What did you think about 3,000 Miles to Graceland? <laughs> Come on. That's a great uh, movie. Uh, that's uh, just uh, a uh, fun movie. My favorite part is the end <laughs> during the montage. I forgot what, what song Kurt's singing. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, when he, oh, that's right. <laughs> The, 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 the during, credits during the end, the end credits, <laughs> yes. and you can tell the only reason Kurt took that movie just so he could do that, he could, just yeah, so he could they, do that song one more time. <laughs> That's awesome. I forgot the name. Of the, I forgot what song he did, but it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. But yeah, I, I thought, uh, and I thought uh, Costner was. I thought that, that's a very underrated movie because uh, yes. it's really that's not. A, they're about these crazy Elvis impersonators right. trying to rob a bank. Yes, yes, uh, that's awesome. But but you're you know talking about the movie, your performance because right the movie wasn't about Elvis. No, it was about David. Yeah, and of course. Know. The central figure is David, mm-hmm. and the central figure in his life was Elvis. So right. you, you had a lot of screen time. I remember seeing a movie called The Rat Pack. Mm-hmm. You probably saw that. I it did. Had Ray Liotta, with the Ray Liotta, uh-huh. sure. And Joe Mantegna. Mm-hmm. Ray Liotta. HBO film, yeah. Yeah, Ray mm-hmm. Liotta played uh, Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. And for me, personally, when I watch a film, I can detach. Mm-hmm. You know, I can look. And just like we talked about. Uh, as I can. Uh, uh, David Keith, when he did Heartbreak Hotel and he played <laughs> Elvis. It's like, I know it's David Keith. And right, I, right. I'm not going to say he. Didn't right. do Elvis. We know he didn't but do they, Elvis. But they, they made that very clear in the overtopness of that movie. Exactly. Right. And one thing I remember uh, Ray Liotta saying, he, yeah. he, 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 he <coughs> told everyone, well, you know, I don't look anything like mm-hmm. Sinatra. And mm-hmm. he goes, that's not the point. Try to capture his essence. Mm-hmm. And that's what and he, he went did. for. And that's what I think I, you I, did. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, th- that's a great example of Ray Liotta, and, and shows you what kind of actor he is. Because yes. I think believe that I think believe it's like a four-parter. Right. By the second part, you are, th- you know, Ray Liotta was Frank Sinatra. His, right. ter- you know, his and Don Cheadle and as Don uh, Sammy Davis. Sammy and, yeah. and, and, and and I, I, I think it was Joe Mantegna. Yeah, Joe Mantegna, uh, Dean Martin. Martin. Yeah, right. I mean, and that was an extremely well-produced uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, miniseries. Where where one of the moments there was a couple moments in the film mm. where I thought I was like, I'm. I'm looking at Elvis. I'm in this moment. It's when you're in the plane. Mm-hmm. You're wearing this red shirt. You're wearing the glasses. Right. And I think uh, David had gotten into a fight. Oh, yeah, David got into a fight. Right, and, right, and you right. called him in. And right. You, and I was like, right. well, you caught him. And, uh, and one other time was... Right. And Elvis Elvis got a real kick out of that stuff. <laughs> El- El- Elvis loved to instigate... Yes. Uh, He'd always do the wink buttons, at somebody. Yeah. Uh, let these guys get to a fight and then, st- and then play the... And then, and then straighten it out later. Yeah. Yeah. Because life on the road was, you know, was just insane with these guys, yeah. uh, you know, and so there really was a lot of 
hijinks uh, uh, amongst these guys. Yeah, but yeah, yeah um, abs- absolutely. Lot, there was quite quite a bit of infighting, and 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 the, and the you know the Memphis Mafia. Um, you know, w- you know, I, I I really think you know the the, the 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 longest being Lamar Fike, who just passed away. Yes, who I had the opportunity to meet. Who actually was before Joe Esposito? Lamar wow. actually went to high school. Well, I th- or met Elvis in—I uh, don't know if he went to high school. I, I might want to check my facts on that, but I, I know he knew Elvis since the fifties. Yeah, fifty-six, right. fifty-seven. I know Red and uh, Red went right. to high school with him and everything. Right. Yeah, and and Lamar Fike, uh, 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 you know the, these guys, you know the history uh, of, of of, and then they're all kind of every year. Joe, we lost Charlie Harge, then we just lost Lamar. Yes. Well, obviously, Joe is still active. Yeah. Yes, um, <clears throat> but uh, it was um, it was def- for, for me as an actor to to, to portray it was a, a, a thrill. Yes, and always saying in all interviews that I was doing for that, you know, I'm not trying to be him on any level. Right, uh, just like he said the, the the Ray Liotta thing, only trying to channel something that the viewer will buy, hopefully. Right. Of course, some of the reviews I read, they didn't buy it at all. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm telling you, I actually read one review. They go, they should have got the guy from Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but but in, in, in my book, I tell you, I went in. Now, I when I see stuff like that, yeah. I just go in. And when I was like, "Wow, mm. he, this guy hit it. Mm. You, you actually hit it." I appreciate and, that. I mean, fantastic job, you know, yeah. P- Peter. You know, thanks, thanks for coming in. I'm, you know, I'm sure glad that. Uh, I, I know you have a busy schedule, but uh, you took the time to come in and really promote. I want to talk about your your film. We have one more segment, so mm-hmm. I want to give you a chance to, you know, push your uh, your your uh, information and everything, so we can really uh, talk about that. All right, Gus, I'd be thrilled to. All right, thank you, brother. Yeah, you bet. All right, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the In Show, and we have in studio guest Mr. Peter. Dobson, and we're going to have more of his career and his future projects in our last segment. So you hang in there. We're going to be right back. And this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. We've got another great show. Yes, we have Mr. Peter Dobson in studio. Peter, it's been a great, great show. You know, great stories. Yeah. I mean, you know, but... Uh, Absolutely. Love. I mean, you have what? Twenty years, right, in the business? Uh yeah, more, 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 more like twenty-eight now. <laughs> twenty-eight. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> going into twenty thirteen, my friend. That's yeah. right around the corner. Um, I've been um, out here since uh, the eighty-four and started working in eighty-seven. So wow. You do the math. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Some good years and some, you know, as we all do, up and down. Up yeah, and I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. We're still surviving, man. Yes, we're, still we're here. here. We're yeah. still kicking away. Phase and two. Phase two. Well, that's right. Uh, we reached our reached that pinnacle. No, no, now we have a- experience and mm-hmm. I won't say age, but right, <laughs> a little more relaxed about certain things now. Is uh, I'm I'm glad to drop some of my 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 angst. <laughs> yes. Um, I just smoke more cigarettes now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my daddy would Turn always to say. that guy now. Speaking of being outdated, smoking. Yeah, smoking. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's you know, funny. That's a, that's a whole different ball of wax, too. Uh, you, but, um, um, it, 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 but you're right. It, 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 this, you've been here for a while. Taking the next, you know, uh, course into, into, into directing now. And, yes. Um, and starting this project. And I, I wanted to add before, the, 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 with, with Exit 102 Asbury Park, um, we we also you know I, uh, over the years I, I've formed a great relationship with uh, uh, producer Robert Evans, who was introduced uh, to me from a good friend of mine, dear friend of mine, Melissa Prophet, um, who has come aboard on this project. He we, we we originally made it into a short film as well for selling purposes that I mm-hmm. shot uh, uh, just about three years ago. Last year, it got it was the the the, the, the fifteen minute version was it was shown in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Clarence Clemens, who was still alive, yes. picked, picked the film to open up for his documentary. Mm. Uh, so I did get to meet with Clarence, talk about me, obviously getting the rights to Springsteen. Not done. Um, this whole thing's not gonna be inundated with Springsteen music, but it, you know, it'd certainly be nice to maybe get his stamp of approval, right. which I, I we pray that he does. Uh, but I did have a, um, he was very sick. Uh, I didn't realize how sick he was. Yes. Ironically, Bruce Springsteen was playing right across the street the night they screened this. I don't think that there's anything as, as, as a coincidence. I think Springsteen knew that Clarence was across the street yes. and played at a, a, a great, another legendary place called the Wonder Bar. Um, yes. 
And I wanted to meet Bruce that night, but it was all hit and miss. The word got out, and there was, you know, this club fits about, you know, 300 people if they're lucky. There was probably close to 1,000 people there, so getting close to him. Clarence is like, I can't even get close to him right now. He did say that. And, 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 uh, but but the, the, the project has certainly developed, and that's why I made White Mule to hone my, my, my chops as a director, to yes. learn more about the camera. A lot of technology that I had to catch up with. Uh, and there's a w wonderful technology that makes filmmaking, I wouldn't say so much easier. Um, anybody can make a film these days, as we know. Yes. <laughs> but the truth is, is that they can't. Right. Um, there, there, there's, there's still an art to it. Uh, I, I firmly believe that. Um, and and while out there in New Jersey, my my dad had, had passed away a few years ago as well. And ironically, the the um, the person who the individual that bought our house in New Jersey was none other, none, none other than, than Deborah Harry from Dar. She's called yeah, Debbie Harry from yeah, Blondie. Blondie. <laughs> now lives in the house that I grew up in, uh, in New Jersey. And we talk on the phone, and I, and I sent her the, uh, the project. So she's, she's agreed to do a cameo in it to play one of the lead's mothers. Um, so there, there, there's kind of this, this aura going on with rock. You know, the, again... You know, I hate to use the word New Jersey because it's been so overwrought. You know, yes. this is not the Sopranos. Jersey Shore, first of all, those people aren't even from New Jersey. They're from they're from they're they're from like Staten Island, <clears throat> waving the glow sticks and wearing. You know, that's uh, uh, that might be. Uh, we, we refer to these people as Bennies when I was growing up. They would come from Brooklyn, Edison, New York, uh, and they weren't even that ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, the the, the new. We're, um, fortunately, the, the town of Asbury Park and the state of New Jersey, I think, deserves something that's not where people are getting buried six feet under, <laughs> are, are waving glow sticks around and falling down uh, stairs and stuff uh, and, and nightclubs. This truly is the East Coast version of American graffiti. It just happens to hap happen in this wonderful, majestic town that was called Asbury Park. Um, and that hasn't been touched yet. And um, we, we put an extraordinary amount of work in this project. Factually, this is a fictional story, but many factual events all through it, um, and and we're, we're we're very eager to uh, hopefully finally start this project. I've certainly paid my damn dues, buddy. <laughs> I, I paid it, it in spades, <laughs> and I'm I'm really ready to take on this task. To uh, and if I never work again after this one, buddy, I'll be fine. But I have to make this film. It's 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 something that uh, has been haunting me ever since a kid. Uh, uh, what this town used to be like. Right. And there's a little bit of a resurgence there now. They've cleaned it up and all that. But it will never be what it was, which was the amusement park and the rock and roll clubs, uh, you know, on virtually on every block. The cruising that used to go on there. Drag, you know, these guys were drag racing on Ocean Avenue in, you know, 56 Chevy versus a 69 Barracuda. And I remember seeing this stuff as a kid. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, so we're very much in that that spirit of an American graffiti is what this is. So are you going to film the whole thing in Jersey? Or are you well, we'd like to. Here? There's some tax issues in New Jersey, <laughs> yes. as we all know. Um, <laughs> right. But there are we are finding some ways around that. Um, I know Michigan's a great state to shoot in. They practically give you the state to right. shoot in. But um, I, in fact, I'm going out there to start a movie uh, with my producing partner and co-writer named Mark Klebanoff. Um, we just finished a film. As an actor, I just worked with Danny Trejo called it Darkness Descending, and I'm starting this film next week. That's going out in Michigan to work with none other than Judd Nelson. <laughs> Judd Nelson. <laughs> uh, but, and, and, uh, but this movie truly needs to be shot in Asbury Park, and, yes. and, and there are ways to do this. And we're, it's, we're, we're, This is a relatively small budget. It's an epic film. It's a period piece. Um, and um, I hope, fortunately, hopefully, hopefully, I'll wind up doing the whole thing in Asbury Park. Beautiful, know. beautiful. So you know, we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll see. You know, we're, we're 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 let's put it this way: we're definitely in the right direction right now. Fantastic. For once, we're definitely heading in the right direction with this with this project. Yeah, fantastic. And I know you have a, a dot com for it and everything. Yeah, there is. It's called a, a, a Exit One Hundred Two The Movie dot com, and you can go on there and you can see the pictures. And then there's a guy that I I found in, um, uh, named. Uh, um, um, oh my goodness! His his his, his name's slipping me. Um, but there, I did casting for a young Springsteen. Young Springsteen. Uh, my uh, Mike Rocket is his name. Mike Rocket. Mike Rocket. And 
I don't think that's his real name, but that's <laughs> the name he goes by. Yes. Is a, he's a spitting image of Bruce Springsteen at 20. He's a, it's his doppelganger mm-hmm. uh, at 23 years old. And uh, we got him. Uh, and you go onto this website, and you'll see we, 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 we put a teaser together yes. with original footage from Asbury Park and took clips from the short film to give everybody the, uh, and our investors the vibe of what we're getting ready to do. So uh, exit102themovie.com, uh, feel free to check that out. You'll get a real good visual of what we're uh, getting that's, ready to do. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you said you're going to be uh, gone next week? I leave next week for Atlantic City, and they're, they're actually doing a, the, a white mule screening out there, that, that kind of smoking the bandit-esque type of film. Right, right. And so it coincides with what you, some of the work right. you're doing. Right, and we'll be discussing exit 102 <laughs> out there and all that stuff. And, and um, you know, it's just a, it's a you know, but, uh, you know, I'm, look, I'm, I'm not Rockefeller right now. I used to... <laughs> I, I did pretty good back in the day as an actor, but but what's happening, f- you know, to be recognized for some of the work that I'm doing right now is 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 a high I, I can't explain. To be to, to be to be acknowledged for, for your for your work is something what every filmmaker wants. They they want you obviously want people to see your films. That you want people to like them. Um, I, there's a definitely a, a trademark that I'm putting on my films, more of these old school right. kind of films, and and and. Uh, um, Tarantino, you know, you always hear Tarantino, Tarantino. Yes. <laughs> you know, he's not the only person that likes cars. With yeah. the, <laughs> That's remember right. Kurt Russell in uh, Death Proof? Oh, know? of course. The best course. part about that movie was Kurt Russell. They should have just kept it with Kurt Russell. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no uh, this is a whole different vibe, and this is ver- a whole different vibe. Uh, um, as I said, there, there are others from that generation, and I'm just as obsessed as uh, uh, with classic films as, as, as any filmmaker. And it, it's, I've been educated for years on, on all the greats uh, and that's why Robert, having Robert Way- uh, Robert Williams <laughs> Robert Evans aboard uh, is is nothing more than a treat to have him he used to run Paramount Studios and the yes. enormous stories and background that he have very rebellious guy himself oh, and went bet. against the grain and came out with the Godfather and love story and he pushed put that yeah put Paramount back on the map after a near bankruptcy that's amazing. You know, and then, of course, later on, he got some <laughs> some things happen. Get the, get the kid stays in the picture. That'll tell you a very accurate story on the great Robert Evans. <laughs> That's it. Look Robert at you. Robert Evans. He, he went to, guilt, guilt, is the, guilt is the mafia of the mind. <laughs> That's what he said to me one time. So he is quite, quite an individual. Uh, so um, Words to live by. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. C- throw caution uh, to the wind. Uh, right. You know, he, he had said that you know Coppola had his American graffiti with Exit 102. I'd, I'd like to have mine. Yeah, that's right. Mine, you know? <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. Uh, and we, we, we gotta and we gotta make this movie quick before they all go. You That's know, right. in, including me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the three decades in the business. Yeah, wow, boy, I'll tell you. That that in itself, and, and yeah. here you are, you know, expanding your career, getting behind the camera, and having a great yeah. vision, great yeah. references. You know, fantastic. You know, I can't wait to see. You sent me the trailer and everything. It, yeah, I sent I you everything. It. Yeah, yeah. And there's that. We, we, we don't have a link for uh, for White Me. It's, it's just currently playing in film festivals right yes. now. But uh, there'll be something available very soon. And I, I, I can assure you one thing. This is not your typical short film. Right. In fact, it, this is a... It's highly entertaining. Yes. It's not two guys smoking a cigarette in a cafe <laughs> with Dutch angles. Yes. This, this is a, a, a very uh, stylized film from the great uh, Ron Vidor. Uh, uh, give it a very old old look. Yes. Um, but uh, certainly don't alienate the younger audience with it because there's a beautiful, beautiful actress named Amber Smith who's very easy on the eyes. Yes. Um, great, rock, great rock and roll soundtrack to it. Um, Fantastic. And, and, a, and, a, and a bitchin' 1,000 horsepower 1972 Roadrunner. There you go. <laughs> driven by the star Bob Spillman. There so you go. Blue, right? I'm sorry, brother. What color is it? Blue. It's it's, it's black. It's, it's black, it's black okay. and it's got like the white uh, stripes on the yes. side. It and and a towering, towering uh, hemi. Yes. Uh, just uh, coming out of the hood. It's about two two and a half feet long. It's in fact, he's out here now, and and the cars the car is truly a masterpiece. That's I'm, beautiful. And, and to ride, it's like getting in a in, 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 a, in a rocket ship. That's it. That's it. Just <laughs> you <laughs> one thousand. If you never sent a one thousand horsepower car, you better put some earplugs in and hang on. <laughs> you got it, right? You, you got it. Bring a barf bag, man. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Major G's. Mill yeah, Peter, thanks for coming in. You know, I, I sure appreciate you taking the time. You know, squeezing us in. Hey, listen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great to. Uh, I don't know what the hell I was talking about this past hour, but. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Hope I made some sense. Oh, you and, did. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I appreciate you playing rubber necking so much. <laughs> That's our theme song. It's implanted so in my head for the rest of the day, probably for the rest of the week now. Hey, fantastic. <coughs> you know, again, and good luck now next week with your trip and everything. We look forward to, you know, Exit 102 and uh, I appreciate everything that. At. All right. Thank please. you so much, Gus. You're welcome. All right. Well, this has been Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. And we had in-studio guest, Mr. Peter Dobson. Of course, you'll be able to visit theinshow.com and find this interview really soon. Of course, look for us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all those great social media sites. And remember, Gus and Peter have left the building.